What's going on, YouTube? So Jeep's best-selling model, the Grand Cherokee, was just fully redesigned, sporting a new design, new features, and even more capability than before, especially here with this Trailhawk. After introducing the popular three-row L model the year before, there's been a lot of buzz around what the new two-row model would take from its longer brother and what would be different. Well, now we've just wrapped up a full week with this next generation model. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the review and find out. Alrighty, so let's get things started here with the exterior design. So, like I was mentioning in the introduction, we do have the Trailhawk. Not only do we have the Trailhawk, we have Trailhawk 4xe. So basically we're gonna merge the two um, different models together to get this combination that you see here today in terms of the overall styling. So starting out here with our grill, no Jeep would be complete without this signature seven slot grill. As you can see, it is finished here um, as you would expect, but with this next generation Grand Cherokee, I think the big thing is that everything's kind of been slimmed down. So the grill itself is going to be a bit narrower up here on the top, although we do have a large, chunky lower fascia. Now, you heard me talk about the 4xe elements. That's going to be all the blue accents you see throughout the front, back, and all inside the cabin. So you have the blue that trims around the outside of the Jeep emblem. You've got these uh, hooks down here for towing you out of a tricky situation. And then up here at the top, you've got that signature anti-glare hood coating, mostly black, but it does have the special blue finish over here on the right-hand side and Trailhawk. I really love the way this looks, especially here on the white, having the black accents, having the blue accents really pops. Uh, this is a great looking SUV in my opinion. Now coming over here to our headlights, again, we do have that narrower look on board. And of course, they're going to be fully LED. So we have reflector, um, low beams, high beams, and then you have your daytime running light and turn signal indicators right there at the top. Both of them are actually amber. So I do like that look. Going down below, we also have our LED fog lamps. Now, if we drop to my knees here and take a look at this ground clearance because that of course is a big deal with the Trailhawk. It's all about that off-road experience and we have a standard air suspension on board. So that means we can raise this up to 10.9 inches in the off-road setting too. That's what you see here today. So this is as tall as the Trailhawk can get and that's going to give you of course plenty of ground clearance for pretty much any situation. Now coming around to the wheels, let's talk about those next. Of course, we do have um, you know, a Meteor tire on board for the Trailhawk. It's gonna be a 18 inch alloy wheel, gloss black finish, and then wrapped in a all-terrain tire. As you can see, these are Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires for, of course, that more rugged um, abilities. And of course, as you can see, this is a good place to really take in just how much ground clearance we have. Check out this space between the tire and the top of the wheel arch. Now, as we carry on from that, like I said, You've got the E, that means you have the four by E and you press on that and that's gonna reveal your charge port. So this does have a 17 kilowatt hour battery. And in case you're wondering about charge times, you're gonna be looking at about three and a half hours if you're using a level two charger. Uh, however, probably a lot of people are just gonna stick with the standard level one charging at their house. And when you do that, it's gonna take about 12 hours. So more or less overnight, we have been charging overnight uh, that method and that is a accurate time estimate, 12 hours. And taking a look at our mirror, as you can see, we do have the gloss black finish on board, the LED turn signal indicator, and we have all the features as well on this Trailhawk. So we've got auto dimming, we have blind spot monitoring, power folding, and heating. Well guys, this is the two row version of the Grand Cherokee. So there's a, a few things I wanna discuss in terms of just how this fits into the overall Jeep lineup. Its overall length is 193.5 inches which does make this about a foot shorter than the three row Grand Cherokee L model, since that is a really quite long vehicle. Um, this is right on par with what you would expect out of the segment in terms of the overall length though. Now, as you probably are noticing, there's a lot of design elements going on too here at the side of the Grand Cherokee. It's a very stylish looking vehicle. So for the Trailhawk model, we're gonna black out all the window surrounds, give you a nice rugged look to it. 
I also want to point out the Trailhawk is also going to come standard with the two-tone contrast roof. So as you can see, we have the black roof on this model, which looks absolutely phenomenal paired with this white paint. I love the contrast. Um, you can also get that on higher-end Grand Cherokee models as an option. Now, moving our way around to the rear design, all of the Grand Cherokee models will have a very different uh, C-pillar design from the Grand Cherokee L model. You have a little bit of a floating roof design effect. And then for the rear design itself, there's not going to be a massive difference between what you have seen on the Grand Cherokee L for the regular two row, as you would expect. Um, as far as some of the design elements, though, we have an exposed wiper right here. We have our Jeep branding, that nice blue lettering around the Jeep to signify that you have the 4xE model. We have this black trim going between the taillights. And my oh my, I love these taillights, guys. You probably heard it in other Jeep Grand Cherokee reviews, but I love these taillights. They're full LED, including the LED reverse light. They just have a super premium look like a luxury vehicle should. And then as far as dropping down 4xE branding, Trailhawk branding, you have a blue tow hook here in the back of the vehicle. For the 4xE, you're not going to have any exposed exhaust outlets. However, that is an available feature on the Grand Cherokee. It just depends on different engine configurations and what trim levels. And as far as the tow rating is concerned for the 4xE, you're looking at 6,000 pounds. It's time to talk about the warranty and safety information for this Grand Cherokee. So as far as that is concerned, I think you're going to be pretty presently surprised with the safety systems because Jeep is throwing in all four of them as standard equipment on all but that very base model, which will remove the auto high beam headlamps. But that, of course, does mean that the vast majority of Grand Cherokees are going to have Ford Mercy braking and pedestrian detection and lane keeping assist, as well as adaptive cruise control and auto high beams. Now, there are a few more advanced systems available if you go for the really top end versions. The highway driving assist, as well as night vision and auto parking are available on the top end Grand Cherokee models. Now, as far as your warranty information is concerned, you do have Jeep signature warranty, three year 36,000 mile basic warranty, five year 60,000 mile powertrain warranty. Additionally, they are including Jeep's wave program, which includes three years of complimentary maintenance as well. But guys, as you can tell, the Grand Cherokee 4xE Trailhawk is certainly a cool looking SUV on the outside. Now let's check out the luxurious interior before we take it out in a spin. So walking up to the Grand Cherokee, every version is going to come standard with the smart entry system. As you can see, we do have the brand's newest key fob. I like the design of it, feels nice in the hand. We also do have remote start on board. And then to get inside, just grab behind the handle and it will unlock the door. So there's a look around at the new cabin of this new generation of Grand Cherokee. And we'll go ahead and climb inside. Right now we're in the aero mode because we were just driving around on the highway. So we're relatively low to the ground. Step in height is very easy to get inside. Now, of course, there's a lot of technology and things to talk about inside of this cabin, but let's first talk about the interior material and color choices. So obviously there's a ton of different trim levels that's going to determine a lot of different um, options in terms of your seating, going from cloth to various grades of leather. However, here with the Trailhawk, we've got the Capri leather on the outside edge, and then we have the suede insert in the middle. Um, as you can see, very nice looking seat. Uh, since the 4xE gives you the uh, theme of blue, so we've got the blue stitching throughout. We also have Trailhawk finished in blue right up there. Like I said, the seat itself, very nice, comfortable. Um, I do like the suede in the middle as well since it holds you in place nicely. Now as far as the seats themselves, they're going to be 12-way power adjusting with 4-way lumbar support. Um, power uh, massaging abilities are not available on the Trailhawk. And let's go ahead and look around at the materials and starting with the door trim. We do have a nice leather wrapped armrest here with a double stitching detail. It is leather above that. It's going to be soft stitch plastic along the top. And we've got a, um, not a wood trim. I don't really know what this is supposed to be mimicking, but it does have a nice design to it. You got your two person memory seating that's included on the limited and above. And our front two windows are one touch auto up and down. Continuing our tour of the interior materials, we have a nice leatherette across the entire upper dash, which I like to see. Again, you got that stitching detail. Coming down, more of that leatherette with the stitching detail, more of that trim through there. 
And then when you get to the lower panels though, we are gonna have hard touch plastic on this model. If you get like a high-end summit, that is going to put this in a stitched leather, but in terms of this Trailhawk, it is just gonna be hard touch through here and piano black finish right through the middle. Now to start it up, put your foot on the brake and press the button. So of course, right off the bat, uh, when you fire up the vehicle, you're not gonna hear any engine because this is the plug-in hybrid 4xe after all. And let's take a look at the gauge cluster. So this is one of the features I really like about the next generation Grand Cherokee's cabin, and that's the fact that we have the full digital gauge cluster on board. This is gonna be 10 and a quarter inches. Um, right now we have it in the uh, night vision mode, which is a cool feature you can option on to this model. Uh, we do have two different luxury packages or tech packages, excuse me, a luxury tech package and a pro tech package. Um, this is included in the pro tech package. However, the uh, digital gauge cluster is gonna be standard no matter what, and you can scroll through all these different kinds of information through here, including some things related to off-road because of course this is the Trailhawk after all. There is not gonna be a head-up display, and as we pull back to the steering wheel, we do have the latest Jeep design, really nice looking leather wrap steering wheel, blue stitching, we've got the silver accents as well as more of this kind of faux wood trim that runs through there. The wheel itself is actually going to be power tilt and telescoping, which I'm surprised to see. This is part of uh, one of those option packages. And you also have steering wheel heating on board as well. Now off to the side here, we've got our electronic parking brake. You've got your headlight controls. We also have three different buttons. These are going to be your three drive modes related to the plug-in hybrid 4xe. So hybrid mode is uh, goes back and forth between the electric um, and the gas powered electric is going to keep it exclusively in electric mode until it depletes and then you have e-save Which is going to save the battery for later and run mostly on the engine power Well, let's go ahead and talk about interior storage because this of course is very important for a family SUV So taking a look at our top section of our center console We do have a nice felt lined area good for small objects like your keys and Then you lift that up you have your broader console, which is of course much larger Nicely felt lined actually on all the sides, so I'm really happy to see that. We do have two USB ports inside of that as well. But you know what time it is, it's time for the coupon test. So let's check it out. Yeah, as you'd expect, it does fit in there absolutely no problem whatsoever. Up in front of that, we got our two cup holders. And then right here underneath this piano black finish, we have another tray. Um, as you can see, this is a wireless phone charging pad. This is part of the Luxury Tech Group. And then we've got not one, not two, but four more USB ports. So really, Stellantis products are the king of USB ports. They always have tons of them. And we've got six USB ports just in the front of the cabin itself. We also have an HDMI and a 12-volt outlet as well. Now let's back on up here to our shifter. So this is one of the things I really like about the cabin is this very high quality rotary shifter. This is made of real metal. It actually gets hot and cold and makes this nice tinging sound when you flick it. Of course, it's very simple to use. You're just gonna twist over to D for drive. We do have little paddle shifters up there on the steering wheel. And then twist over to the R to go into reverse. When you do, you will be greeted with this 360-degree camera system if you have the ProTech group like we do today. As you can see, you've got your overhead view, you've got your traditional view with active trajectory. Um, we are also going to have front and rear parking sensors. And then you can go through and cycle between a lot of different views, including a front view, which is good, of course, for using things out here on a trail. You've got both of those views as well. Then for park, just press the P. Like I already mentioned, the electronic parking brake is on the other side. And you do have two little toggles here as well. So since this is the Trailhawk, as you can see, we've got several different modes. Auto and Sport are basically for on-road use. And then you have your snow, sand, mud, and rock modes for when things get a lot more hardcore. We also have our four-wheel drive low lock. Over here, you got your hill descent control as well as your locking or disconnecting sway bar. And then right there is uh, where you're going to make your adjustments to the standard air suspension. This is the default middle setting. And let's move on up here to this panel. So as you can see, a lot of buttons are kind of crammed into this area here. This is going to be related to both your audio system as well as your climate control. So let's start with the climate controls. 
These toggles right here will adjust your temperature up and down. When you do, you're gonna see that adjustment reflected up there in the main display. You can also take control of your fans and zones right through there. Now also in this area, we do have our three-stage heated seats, which are standard on the Trailhawk, and also three-stage ventilation is standard on the Trailhawk. Let's go ahead and sample the audio system. So we do have the middle tier audio system, which is a 506 watt nine speaker Alpine surround sound system. You can go up to the fully loaded models um, and get the 950 watt 19 speaker Macintosh, but let's go ahead and sample this middle option. Yeah, so overall sound quality is quite nice and it definitely has no problem filling up the cabin with sound. Okay, so let's talk about the display. So as you can see, it does have that cool design where it kind of floats up here um, and it looks very nice. This is the 10.1 inch display with the brand new Uconnect 5 system. So the big improvements on board are basically in um, overall speed between switching between sections and things like that. Um, and of course the graphic quality really looks a lot better than the outgoing generation. So we do have the built-in navigation system. That's what that looks like. Um, and, and then we also have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay on board. Now I do want to take a second to talk about this though because we've been testing this vehicle out for a week and I have to say we've definitely been having uh, quite a bit of problems when it comes to the wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay systems. So I've got the Android phone, Mason's got an iPhone. Both of them are actually brand new. We bought them just a month ago and neither of them will stay connected wirelessly to this vehicle. Uh, after about 20 minutes, it will kick both systems off consistently. Every single trip we go on, 20 minutes is about the maximum. It will stay connected and it takes a long time to connect originally. So I don't really know what's going on. It might be specific to uh, just this unit, um, but in terms of our experience with the system, it's definitely not been working uh, properly in terms of both of those wireless systems. So uh, we have been having to plug it in manually to see if we can get that to work. But moving beyond the screen, up at the top there, we've got a few more buttons. Uh, this one in particular is what turns on and off max regeneration mode. And then right here is what turns on and off your passenger display, which we do have on this model. I'll let Mason talk about that passenger display though a little later in the video when he gets into the passenger seat. Now as we rise on up from here, we do have a standard auto dimming mirror on the Trailhawk model. However, we also have the optional rear camera mirror. So you just flip that switch, goes into that rear camera feed. Um, and I should mention that uh, the backup cameras in the front and the rear, both of those do have washers um, to wash off any mud that you might experience since this is the Trailhawk. Up above that, we do have our home link remotes. And then finally wrapping up the front of the cabin, this is our panoramic sunroof. This is going to be optional on the Trailhawk model for about $1,800. Guys, you are gonna be very pleasantly surprised in the rear seat of this Grand Cherokee because as you can probably tell by just kind of looking around, it's gonna be a very luxurious experience, almost as if we're in a full-blown luxury SUV. So let's go ahead and discuss the space first, and then we'll hop into some of those luxury features. Um, so what we're looking at is 38.2 inches of legroom, 39.4 inches of headroom, which is a lot of space. As you can see, there's a ton of headroom, lots of legroom. I'm five foot nine. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who's five foot uh, eight. And as you can see, I'd say six to seven inches of space between my knees and the seat back. Also plenty of room for my feet to slide up underneath the seat. So very very comfortable overall now as far as some of the features that jeep is going to throw in like i mentioned this is a very luxurious rear area so here in the top you will notice this little blank hole that would be for climate controls on higher end grand cherokee models if we drop below that though you are going to have standard rear vents i believe on every single grand cherokee model dropping below that we have tons of connections i know you saw it in the front already jeep throws in a lot of connections so if I can get this open here. Oh, we have a household style outlet right here. We have two USB-Cs, two USB-As, and then beside that we also have rear seat heating. That is going to be standard on the limited trims and above. 
Seat ventilation is also available on this Grand Cherokee if you go for those really top end Summit models. Now, if you drop the center armrest down, you do have cup holders inside. And you're probably also noticing one of the other features that is a nice luxury touch. That are these rear seat entertainment screens. Now, of course, there are dual rear seat entertainment screens, so it's not just one of them. You also are gonna have included in that a remote control, so you can just sit here and click through Netflix as you would on any any normal TV. Um, it's really quite cool, and you know we fiddled with this quite a bit um, throughout the last week that we've had this vehicle, and this is one of the best rear seat entertainment screens that you can get on any vehicle right now, and they're 10.1 inches if you're curious as to the size. Turning to the door trim, luxury is not going to end here because we do have rear side uh, window sunshades as well. And then as far as the materials, we do have uh, a relatively soft touch upper part. We got this trim piece and a leather armrest portion. Down below that, we do have some storage as well. Now walking up to the tailgate area, you will have a power tailgate standard on the limited trim levels and above. If you go for the overland trim levels and above, that will also throw in the hands-free functions as standard equipment. And we do have it optioned onto this Trailhawk model. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open it up. And as you can see, it does work quite well. I definitely haven't had any issues with it over the past week with the hands-free abilities. Now, in terms of the cargo capacity going on in this Grand Cherokee. There is a lot of space back here. As you can see, it swallows up our camera gear completely fine. We're looking at 37.7 cubic feet of cargo capacity behind the second row seats. If you fold those down, you're looking at 70.8 cubic feet of cargo capacity. So really large numbers here. You're probably also curious as to if the 4xe is going to reduce your cargo capacity down at all and the answer to that is no because jeep has actually put the batteries underneath of the rear seat so it does not impact your cargo capacity whatsoever for this grand cherokee 4xe now if you're curious as the difference between the two row grand cherokee and the three row in terms of cargo capacity you're looking at 15 cubic feet less so a little bit less space for the two row as you would expect now let's go ahead and mention some of the features back here we have a nice carpeting along the floor if you lift this up is pretty heavy there is uh, additional space up underneath the here for a spare tire it also has a nice integrated spot for your charging cable i do also want to point out the seats fold 60 40 split however there are, are no handles back here to fold the seats down so that's a little bit disappointing to me you have to do that in the second row off to the left side you have a 12 volt outlet um, and that looks to be about all of your features in this cargo area Your passenger seat is going to be power adjusting if you go for at least the limited trim level of the Grand Cherokee. And you do also have uh, lumbar support as well. It's four ways. Um, I also want to point out this right here. So I know Drew mentioned it briefly on the inside, but we wanted to talk about it here on the passenger side is this passenger display. Now, this is basically the same one that you've seen in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer models. It's a 10.25 inch display. It's a touch screen um, and it is available if you go for at least the limited trim level or above. It's a, I believe, a $1,100 standalone option. You have a lot of different functions here. Of course, you can play like movies and such. So if you're here on the passenger side on a long road trip, you can just watch a movie. Um, and it's worth noting the driver cannot see this from the driver's side, even with the display on. So if you kind of go anywhere off of center, it looks like it's just piano black trim here. So that's really cool feature to have. Now, if we open up the glove box, we do have a really nice one. It's nicely felt lined. And then it's certainly big enough to fit our coupons in. So let's see what the coupon of the day is. It's gonna be Fazoli's, buy one, get one free baked spaghetti. So that sounds about pretty good right now. You can throw those in there and start using them so you can save money on gas and food because this is a plug-in hybrid after all. Up top, we have LED lighting as well as a mirror, and we can detach it and extend it out. Dang. All right, and that's 60 miles yeah. per hour. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the 4xe can boogie, so definitely don't think um, just because you're getting the electrified version that you're going to be, you know, prioritizing efficiency over power because this is actually the most powerful version of the next generation Grand Cherokee. We're looking at 375 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. So you heard me right, that actually 
makes more power than the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 version. Yeah. Obviously this is gonna be quite a bit more efficient as well. Yeah, this four by E, you know, that's really the thing about it is, you know, a lot of times, and we'll talk throughout this test drive about how the hybrid system works and, and such, but when you kick into that motor and really need the extra power, it's shocking to you just how well it puts it down. It does a really fantastic job of just getting you that power, I mean, really kicking you back in your seat. If you're wondering about a zero to 60 time, it is about six seconds according to Jeep. That feels about right to me. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a little second to kick in, but it really does. Once it, <laughs> it pushes yeah, when, you back. Yeah, when the power hits, you it's can nearly 500 pound feet of torque. All right. Now, as far as what comprises this 4xE, let's go ahead and talk about that. It's a two liter turbo four cylinder engine. Um, you're gonna have two electric motors and a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack on board. Um, that is what makes that 375 horsepower. Uh, so that's what that is. Now, of course, you do have the other engine options if you would prefer that. So you have the 3.6 liter uh, Pentastar V6, 293 horsepower for that model. Of course, you do still have the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 as an option. Um, that's something worth considering, especially if you don't mind paying for gas, because that sounds amazing. We've sampled it in so many other uh, products. That Hemi V8 is phenomenal. Um, that's going to have 357 horsepower, 390 pound-feet of torque. So nothing to snooze at there either, but um, it's going to definitely get worse fuel economy as we'll talk throughout this drive about. So as far as the transmission is concerned, we do have an 8-speed automatic transmission on board. Oh, this is a pretty good transmission. It feels you know, right at home inside of this vehicle. Of course, this is pretty complex in terms of like the overall powertrain structure. So occasionally, you know, you do have a little pause or a little hesitation as it works out, you know, whether to fire the engine, what gear to put the transmission in. But overall, you know, it actually seems surprisingly sure of itself, um, more so than I even thought it would be. Now, what I'm driving around in right now is called the hybrid mode. This is going to be the default when you choose the 4xE and uh, what that's going to do is basically just kind of shift between battery power and engine power depending on what is the most efficient for that current situation. Obviously it's best if you're going like hard on the throttle to go ahead and fire the engine up. If you're going down a hill like we are now, turn the engine completely off. Yeah you and it accelerated all the way up to about 30 miles per hour before it even fired the engine up. Right, so it definitely is uh, really good in that regard. The other thing you have is um, you have the power mode, which is basically going to, or it's called save mode, excuse me, and it's gonna save the battery pack for later and mostly use the engine. And then you've got the opposite. You've got the electric mode where you can press that button and it's gonna keep it in the battery power the vast majority of the time um, until that battery is completely depleted which is going to be giving you 25 miles of pure electric range and through our week-long testing of it um, you know we've had plenty of time to experience it and to know its tendencies it definitely goes the full 25 miles if you have it charged up um, we've definitely been getting that range figure even with air conditioning on it's hotter than Hades here in Kentucky, so there's a lot of air conditioning on. You get the full 25 miles of range, um, and I really think the main thing worth pointing out is it really likes to have the engine off. I, I don't know if Drew mentioned on the inside of the video, but like um, if you cycle through the gauge, you can tell that almost like half of our driving was on full battery power, and we've only right. charged it up once. Yeah, even so, when the battery is fully depleted, it still has a good amount of like regen so that it kind of charges the battery up a little bit, depletes it out and actually makes for a surprising amount of your miles on pure electric. But uh, it looks like we're coming up here on a flat spot so I'm going to switch it, switch it excuse me, into the pure electric and we'll do an acceleration that way. Yeah, that's so weird, but... All right, and there's 60 miles per hour, so um, <laughs> obviously, 
it's not going to be fast in the pure electric. The electric motor itself just makes about, I think, 130 horsepower, and this is obviously a very large SUV, but yeah, so you can do that, and that's a really interesting effect. Um, you're actually accelerating up. Uh, you feel the transmission still shifting gears. Um, so it, it you know feels really interesting, but I do like that you have full control. A lot of uh, PHEVs, especially kind of accelerating hard, will go ahead and put the gas motor on. But it appeared you know even with my foot all the way down, it went ahead and let me just keep on accelerating. All right, and I do want to continue by talking about a few different elements going on uh, with this. Grand Cherokee. Besides the powertrain, obviously the powertrain is pretty much a focus of this video because the 4xe and we have the extensive testing with it. Um, but as far as your drivetrains are concerned, the Trailhawk is going to have standard four-wheel drive. Um, the other Grand Cherokees do have rear-wheel drive standard and optional four-wheel drive, but this Trailhawk is going to be locked into that full four-wheel drive system. Right, and like I was talking about on the interior, you've got a lot of different settings for your drive modes, four-wheel drive controls, you know, this is the tough Grand Cherokee, so as you'd expect, this can, you know, really excel off-road. We don't really have any types of uh, locations to do any hardcore off-roading this week, but, um, you know, seeing on YouTube some of our um, fellow auto journalists, uh, the things that they have done with the Trailhawk has been seriously impressive. You can really go off-road and go to some way off the beaten path and something like this and do it in silence without even using any fuel. Right. And speaking of fuel, uh, if you want an MPGE figure, so kind of the mixed driving, you're going to be getting 56 MPGE for this 4xE model uh, with four wheel drive. If you're curious about the other fuel economies, the 5.7 liter is going to be 17 MPG and the 3.6 liter is going to be 22 MPG combined. Um, so definitely a huge benefit for going with this 4xE model in terms of your daily efficiency. Um, I think that's really where this vehicle shines so much is uh, you can put in that hybrid mode and if you charged it every single night, you'd be operating on electric power probably about 50 to 60% of the time, which is really gonna save you uh, in fuel cost. Right, and depending on where your um, you know, workplace is and your normal daily commute, you could easily achieve this all under electric power if you go into the full battery mode. Another thing you can do to maximize your efficiency with this vehicle is press this button right here at the top. That's going to be your max regen mode. Um, really makes the regen much, much stronger. I'm not pushing the brake or anything, and we're really slowing down quite a lot. It's not going to take you to a full stop, so don't try that, but, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really strong. And it's just a really cool sensation kind of driving around here. Complete, complete a Jeep, silence. With, yeah, yeah, it's just weird. So, yeah, it, it is uh, interesting for sure. All right, guys, and let's go ahead and talk about the ride quality and discuss that. So for this 4xe, obviously we've had an entire week to spend with the vehicle. Uh, the ride quality is pretty good, although I will say um, I think the suspension is tuned a little bit stiffer than my liking in this Trailhawk trim level. I don't know if that's because of you know, off-road capability or whatnot, but it does seem a little bit uh, stiffer when you go over bumps. It transfers definitely into the cabin more than I would think for something with the air suspension. Um, I do believe we briefly had a drive in the Summit Reserve, and I think that was a little bit more comfortable. So sure. I think the trim level is gonna be a factor at play in that ride quality. But overall, it's not bad by any means. And we'll also get a sound level reading here going 55. Okay, and 54.9 decibels. Really, really good reading, guys. Um, the quietness is something that struck me just because, well, half the time the motor is completely off, um, and also it does seem very insulated inside of this cabin. Alrighty, you guys know what time it is. It's time for our slam dunk and air ball. So it's our favorite element and the element we think needs to be improved. So I'll start off with our slam dunk after this week of testing. I think what strikes me, this is kind of a broad slam dunk, but it's really just kind of this all around capability. Um, this is kind of a go anywhere, do anything SUV. And like I said, I know that sounds a little general, but when you take into account the fact that 
this Trailhawk is extremely capable. You can go off-road, um, you can really severe off-road, um, but you also have a crossover at the end of the day that can haul your family around. It's very comfortable to live with on the day-to-day. -day. We have a very luxurious cabin, lots of technology. Um, it kind of almost feels like a no-compromise um, SUV. But that does lead us into also the air ball, which I'll let Mason talk about. Right. So um, <laughs> I'll start out by saying that the air ball is the price. Um, I'll start reading off some of the other models. So the Laredo starts at $39,395. And then there's a lot of different trim levels. So you can get this Jeep Grand Cherokee and a lot of different flavors. And then you go all the way up to the Summit Reserve, which starts at $66,650. That said, so when you add the um, 4xe in, and also this Trailhawk is one of the more expensive trim levels, um, we're going to be starting at $64,055 for a 4xe Trailhawk. Um, and there are quite a few option packages. This one's pretty highly optioned up to a as-tested price of $73,360, guys. So that it, the reason that's our air ball is because 73 grand is very 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 expensive that gets you into a lot of luxury suv categories um and some of the materials in here are not quite luxury suv worthy you know such, such as like this hard touch center tunnel here you're not going to find that in like a bmw or a mercedes or a volvo or anything like that so that's where it kind of gets you is that price tag is pretty pricey for some of the materials inside of this cabin. Now, it is worth noting the 4xe does qualify you for a tax credit as well. So that does kind of bring down your price a little bit, but you don't get the full 7500 and yeah, you do get the full 7 Or actually you do. You get the full 75. Yeah, not to correct you, but even though it's uh, the way that the government calculates it is based on how large your battery pack is. So even though this achieves 25 miles of pure electric range, it actually qualifies for the full 7500 because it is 17 kilowatt hours versus even you know a few months ago we drove like the santa fe plug-in that achieves more range but the battery pack is smaller which disqualifies it from the full 7500 dollars but all in all uh both mace and i have thoroughly enjoyed driving this trailhawk 4xe over the last week um like i said really with the slam dunk it just seems like a great all-around suv that just has a lot of strong areas and really this new generation of grand cherokee just takes that typical very popular grand cherokee um, you know vehicle that people have been loving for generations now and really makes it the best it's ever been well guys thanks so much for joining us on this in-depth review of the jeep grand cherokee trailhawk 4xe Obviously, this is a pretty cool car to have for an extensive week-long test, so special thanks to Jeep for sending it down to us. And if you want to see more content like that, please hit that subscribe button down below because that is how we get content like this, is to have more subscribers on our channel, more content coming up. So please go ahead, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a family member. Also, follow us on TikTok and Instagram, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.